How's it going everybody? Josh KI6NAZ. I'm at my dad's place in Big Bear, California, and I'm going to be playing just a little bit of radio. I wanted to bring a radio along, so I bought my 705 and my Pactena Mini N-Fed Half Wave. Let me show you how I'm getting this set up. All right, so I've got the Tactical Mini by Soda Beams telescopic rod here and that connects to my wire antenna on the clip, uh, which I bored out a little bit to go to the topmost element. The trick of all this is using those Walmart gear snakes I've talked about. Let me show you. All right, so these are just rubber coated wire that I cut to size, and I usually leave three or four of them on my backpack, twisted up on just a loop on my backpack. I'm using a fence rod post that was here just to fix my uh, tactical mini. All right, so I've pulled the wire for the antenna through, and I've attached the end-fed half-wave center connector. I will note that this comes with 40 feet of antenna wire connected, and you will have to cut that down for 20 meters. I made an initial cut at just over 33 feet, and I took a bearing with my 705's SWR meter. We may need to make an adjustment to the wire. All right, we're just starting to see the dip on the left side of the band, which means the antenna wire is too long for the 20 meter band, which starts right here and ends about right here. So I need to take off about six inches or so. We'll give it a shot and see how that works. We should be able to absolutely just sock this uh, SWR all the way down to where there's just nothing. It should be a full, ooh, a little bit of tot, a little bit of tension there. So I'm gonna take off six inches. I gotta tell you the truth, I'm just eyeballing this. So maybe a little bit less than six inches. I'm gonna go with four, and we'll take another test. It's pretty ingenious how uh, George uses these little clips. Now I, I did the uh, Kate MRD hack where I bored out the hole so they would fit over the, uh, over the last element on my rod. Let's get our wire up and under here. All right, doing another check. We're sliding it in. So probably, I'm gonna take another six inches. I'm gonna take a full six inches this time because that didn't give me much out of that last snip. So let's do that. Now, I know people will, uh, will measure this stuff out. I don't. Not to say you shouldn't or anything like that. Just not what I do. That's okay, you do what you do. All right, I'm gonna take a full six this time. And again, I am eyeballing it, but I'm calling that six. If I'm a little long, that's okay, because that means I can run digital modes like FT8, and I keep threatening to get better at Morse code, and this is where I could, you know, actually be pretty nice to have a little QRP radio like this at my dad's place. Oh, yeah, we're putting a little bit of load. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. All right, I'm going to reposition this. We're going to go to the next pole. All right, let's check it. Okay. Woo! That's the low side. This is one of those instances where um, you could connect it up to an antenna analyzer. Uh, the 705 has a pretty good little sweep there that we use. All right, after a couple more cuts now, so here's the low side of the band at 14.046, so down in the low side of CW. If I start keying, now it's gone up one, keying again. 14.346 right there, that's a low of like 1.2. So we're down in the 1.1s throughout the entire 20 meter band, which is exactly what we wanna see with this antenna. So that's spot on, this is perfect. This is like dialed in mono band and fed half wave perfection. So you all definitely heard me say that you want to aim for having resonant antennas when you're doing QRP. This is no exception, so spot on, very nice. All right, we're doing a little whisper test here, trying to test out our capability with the Pactena. You can see no SWR, and we've got full power output, five watt power output. And our ALC is just, just touching right there, about perfect. Let's see how we do. All right, so we, we got kind of all over the place. We made it down to New Zealand. Uh, we made it over into 
I think that's either Spain or the Canary Islands, and all over the United States on Whisper. Now, of course, Whisper is a is a low power mode, so um, you can't expect you're going to do single sideband like performance like that. But uh, not bad. My first contact was to Alberta, Canada. Literally, I set this up and I replied to a CQ, and the station that uh, heard me was uh, over in Canada. So I'm going to play some. B-roll while I play that recording because I didn't have the camera on. I was not prepared for that. So I just quick fingered, hit record on the 705 and was able to uh, capture that QSO. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Yeah, my name is Dennis. Uh, name is Dennis. I'm talking about a four and a three or something like that there. Uh, but I think you're, uh, I'm not sure you might be QRP or, or something there. I thought I heard you say something along that line there. So I think I got the call sign uh, correct there. And uh, I think that uh, you're in, uh, I'm not sure uh, where you're located there and what your name is there. I got it as Josh, but I'm not sure uh, there. Uh, yeah, okay, fine. I'm located near Edmonton, near Edmonton, Alberta, in Western Canada there. All right, we're packing up, so I'm just going to start taking the antenna here at the feed point. And I'm going to start wrapping on the PCB winder. I just wrap it until I get to the base of the, the pole there. Now I'll go ahead and disconnect my my antenna from the pole. If you wanted to, you could figure eight this and that would be fine too. So far, it, it doesn't look like this antenna takes a lot of memory. I'll probably try that the next time I, I operate with this. And there you go. I just shove the clip on the back underneath behind the uh, on the side that doesn't have the toroid there, throw that in my pocket. And let's start from the bottom of my tactical mini. I guess I should have used a dead cat. I don't have a dead cat on this mic right now. Sorry about that for the wind. All right, so tactical mini here. Throw the cap on it. And I got my pack tenna right there. And I use a couple of those gear snakes, like I mentioned. Here's one, I probably dropped another one somewhere. There it is. Just these two to hold up the pole. That's pretty much all you need with the feed line. Let me show you the feed line. And then for feed line, I picked up this RG316 coax along with the Pactena one-to-one -one choke balance, uh, and this goes in between the coax and then into my radio and then up to the feed line. I don't think anyone would tell you that RG316 is low loss coax, but at the same time, it's highly packable. So this just goes together like this, grab this. Here's my antenna bag, which also has a roll up J-pole in it. And I throw that all in there. Nice flat pack, goes up nice against the base bottom of a, a pack or up against your back, that kind of thing. And then the tactical mini goes into a water bottle holder. And that's pretty much all there is to it for this antenna system. Pretty cool. The pack tenna mini goes for about $89 when it is available. This is pretty much a handmade product that George does. George, if you are not aware, is one of the hosts of the Ham Radio Workbench podcast, which is a fantastic podcast. Everybody should go check it out. Again, the link is in the description. And there are some other accessories. He also offers a linked dipole version of this antenna, which sounds fantastic. With the linked dipole, you can get multi-band operation out of it. And I have heard from George, potentially, that there may be linked end-fed elements uh, in the future, which would be very nice, because then I could have a nice little 40-meter element for doing some nighttime, possibly even 80, when I'm up here at my dad's place. Anyway, thanks so much for watching, everybody. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up, and if you have not already, please subscribe. I'll talk to you later. See ya.